Alopecia areata is a common autoimmune disorder that causes hair loss. So we want to make sure you know what it is and how to cope with it. This is What's Up Doc, Alopecia Areata Edition. Pfizer Senior Medical Advisor, Dr. Frida Lewis Hall is back and has the answers to some of our viewers questions. Nice to have you back, doctor. Love being back. All right, we love you too. Okay, our first question was sent in from Jessica who wants to know about Alopecia Areata. Roll the tape. Hi, my name is Jessica. I am from Los Angeles, California. And I have a question about alopecia. What is the cause and cure of it? Well, that's my niece, of Jessica. I, didn't, I just <laughs> realized Are that. You okay, yeah. Oh, <laughs> <that's beautiful. laughs> great. What a great way to start. Okay, <laughs> so Dr. Frida, give us an answer. Well, that's a great question, Jess niece Jessica. <laughs> um, and so let me start with a little bit of primer about what alopecia areata is. Okay. It is an autoimmune skin disease, and we're not fully understanding what causes it, but basically what happens is the body's immune system mistakenly attacks healthy hair follicles, uh -oh. damaging them. And this can lead to hair loss of the scalp and the face and then other parts of the body. Now it usually um, appears as one or more patchy uh, spots of hair losses, but with more severe forms of alopecia areata, complete hair loss can occur on the, yes, on the scalp, on the face, and on the body, complete hair loss. Oh, wow. Now, Jessica asked about whether or not there was a cure, mm -hmm. and currently there is no cure for alopecia areata. However, doctors may use a variety of methods to try and help manage the symptoms. So be sure to talk to your health care provider about possible ways to um, help hair, help hair regrowth, for example, or to slow down hair loss. Good to know. And I just want to give a quick reminder so I don't forget to do it because okay. it's really important, and that is if you have alopecia areata, remember to protect your skin. Mm -hmm. um, do so by wearing sunscreen or a hat. Yeah. Okay. Wow. All right. Dr. Frieda, tell us how common alopecia areata is and who does it affect? So alopecia areata affects um, as many as six 8.8 million people wow. in the U.S. Just in the U.S.? Yes. Wow. That's about 2% of the population. Yeah. So this is common. It can strike anyone at any age, so it does not discriminate. But it often begins in adolescence or early adulthood. Now, having a family member with this condition or other autoimmune diseases like type 1 diabetes or rheumatoid arthritis or lupus can raise your risk of having alopecia areata. And people with alopecia areata have been seen to um, develop diseases like thyroid disease, mm -hmm. eczema, nasal allergies, and asthma at higher rates. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, our next question is from Janae. Let's take a look. Hi, my name is Janae. I'm from West Covina, California. And my question is, are alopecia and stress related? And how are they related? Wow. All right, doctor, give us the deets. Yeah, well, uh, this is a really good question because the relationship between stress and alopecia areata isn't actually clear yet. Really? Because mm -hmm. I've heard of that before. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, you know, kind of wonder if they're related. Mm -hmm. So while we don't know exactly how and why alopecia areata develops, some believe that stress may play a role in contributing to the development of it. But newer research has failed to prove the relationship, a definitive relationship, between alopecia areata and stress. Now that said, there is data that suggests that patients that have developed alopecia areata may experience emotional upset and stress associated with the disease. Okay. So besides hair loss, are there other signs and symptoms of alopecia areata that people should know about and look out for? Yep, so as I mentioned, um, one set of symptoms is this patchy hair loss. So you'll notice that the healthcare provider may also look for a characteristic finding of alopecia areata called an exclamation point hair. Mm. Yeah, so what is that? Yeah. Around the edges of the hair loss, the hairs are short, they're broken off, and they narrow as you get close to the scalp. So they look like exclamation points. Oh, wow. 
People may also experience white spots, lines, and dents in their fingernails and their toenails. Mm -hmm. Now, people don't start looking at that I now. Know, I know, I, I that. just look. Sorry. So, because people other than, or people without, um, alopecia areata can experience that as well. Okay, 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 good to know. Yeah, so it's important to also remember that there are other causes of hair loss besides alopecia areata, and alopecia areata looks different from person to person. So it's really important to get into your doctor and to get the right diagnosis. Okay. All right. Okay. So doctor, we know that living with alopecia areata can be challenging, but what advice can we give people who are living with the disease now? Yeah, so this is the disease that even though it doesn't cause pain, it can be painful to live yeah. with. Yeah. You know, and it can be from people who are looking and thinking, well, it's mm. contagious, mm. but it's not contagious. Um, or the toll that it takes to lose your hair and to have your appearance change, mm -hmm. this can um, really lead to psychological and emotional health issues. And in fact, there um, is often an increase in anxiety and depression in people who are experiencing alopecia areata. The key is you do not have to do this by yourself. Um, lean into your network if you are diagnosed with this. Depend on your friends, on your family, and also on support groups. For example, the National, Are the National Alopecia Areata Foundation, that's a mouthful, mm -hmm. can help you to identify a support group and can also help identify other resources to help you cope with this. So good. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Frieda. You you're just full of information, and we love when you stop by. Thank Make you. sure to visit Dr. Frieda's website, GetHealthyStayHealthy.com. It's a great resource. And for more information, please head on over to TheReal.com. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back. This is The Real. Good job.